That's 570 Delta. Roger, I understand. Fire on board. Main equipment being notified. Safe souls and fuel on board. Have three souls on board. That's 570 Delta. Roger. Okay, so you got the fire, you've declared an emergency, and you've asked for all men and equipment. This airport is yours. We have a huge problem in GA right now, and that's the general aviation accident fatality rate. This is grassroots. I love that you kind of really haven't told me everything you got planned here. You got your banjos, your guitar, you're throwing my slogan all over the place. Yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of going to be the theme of this whole grassroots thing. Love it. So today, you're doing an AQP annual flight review that has nothing to do with a Shondell. I just practiced. You did? <laughs> we want to practice and review the actual maneuvers that kill us out there. Away we go. General aviation is never going to change what's on the check ride, but you can change what you want to practice and review and improve on after you get your license, and that's what we're doing today. This is a pretty awesome experience. We just teed up the uh, fire and rescue guys to really practice this and actually did declare an emergency. Dan teed it up. I definitely had the adrenaline going on. We were really going to do this. All right, I'm excited about this one. I'm not going to be in the hot seat for once. This is kind of a continuation of something I did with Dan Greider that really got a lot of attention. Kind of trying to bring airliner logic into general aviation. You're never flying along in an airline and riding back and hear the captain come over a PA and say, hey folks, we're in a lot of trouble and things are really going wrong, but it's okay, I'm gonna do a Shondell and get us out of this. Never happens. Airliners don't do Shondells. When Dan called me about this one, I could tell how passionate he was and that it was worth squeezing in before my instrument rating flight test. So as I drove to the airport the morning of my test, I just basically thought to myself, I'm gonna go flying with my daughter in the back seat. I very quickly kind of forgot about the examiner and just showed him that I knew what I was doing. So I'm proud to say I got the instrument rating done, and then after the dust settled, got straight into editing this one. The local community was a huge part of making it happen. I'm the president of EAA 863, Lebanon Chapter. We have our annual Christmas party where we give awards and, and things like that, so uh, that's happening tonight here. Uh, brisket. They welcomed us to their party, and four of their pilot members were the guinea pigs for our program. The same proficiency-based stuff that we use in music. Get really good. Get your chops sharp in music. Let's get our chops sharp in flying, too. Unfortunately, my drum chops are not sharp, but Dan was not going to let me off the hook, so uh, we did a little bit of jamming out here. This is Nashville. It was surreal to jam with Banjo Ben. He's also a member of the chapter. We had a lot of fun, but in all seriousness, general aviation is in trouble. The serious problem that we have today is with insurance and obtaining insurance, especially on owner-flown turbines and owner-flown twins, where insurance may not actually be even available in the future due to the fatal accident problem that we got. This is totally fixable. We're stealing a concept from the airlines. This all started in September when Dan invited me out to Atlanta to work on the initial idea. I've got your airspeed indicator mark with a special mark. It went so well that we found ourselves in Nashville working on the follow-up in December. <laughs> no, we're dead. That's, That's just amazing to watch. <laughs> Dan wanted to get me out here to help sort of finish telling a story we started that really got a lot of attention. It was actually featured in the print version of Flying Magazine. I've been reading that magazine since I was a teenager before I started flying. I kind of feel like we're onto something here, bringing airliner logic to general aviation training. First time ever, a full article about a YouTube video got excellent traction and that's how come we're up here and we're gonna do some advanced training stuff on some maneuvers that aren't normally done for general aviation. I'm hoping that the concept will resonate well with everyone, we get some good traction off of this, and I'm hoping that we can save some lives. And just like last time, I was in the dark initially, but it quickly became clear this has the potential to affect massive change. So AQP is Advanced Qualification Program. It says that you can design your own checkride maneuvers specific to what you're wanting to do and it's what the airlines have gone to. And they only practice and review the maneuvers that are totally critical to them. General Aviation keeps on practicing and reviewing steep turns and Shondells. When do we need a steep turn to get us out of something? How about the maneuvers that are actually going to kill us? How about after you get your private's license, you learn what the maneuvers are that are actually going to kill you, and you practice and review those so that you can absolutely be ready to deal with any of those at any time. It's probably the 
most significant project I've ever done. And I'm really excited about this material. We have a huge problem in GA right now, and that's the general aviation accident fatality rate. This is grassroots. This is pilots helping pilots. We're gonna work on that and we're gonna improve. We're gonna practice and review and improve. And we're gonna play some bluegrass music, fly some airplanes, and talk about some really important concepts. Four local pilots are participating. Abe, Gary, James, and Sam. Each took part in a lengthy brief, and by the end, they all agreed we could be doing better. Are we in general aviation adequately prepared for a surprise rejected takeoff? No, we're not. No. No. I, I don't know. Are we in general aviation adequately prepared for a loss of thrust on takeoff? I would say not at all. Not at all? No. No. Never heard it. Are we in general aviation, are we adequately prepared for that scenario, VFR and inadvertent IMC? No. 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 Once you get into it, you don't. You can't believe it. You can't believe it. We're not prepared. We're not prepared. Once our pilots were briefed, they took the long walk with Dan to experience a brighter AQP flight review. In GA, we're doing a biennial flight review once every two years. It's only an hour flight, and it's reviewing the maneuvers that don't make any difference. We want to do it more often, and we want to practice and review the actual maneuvers that kill us out there. General aviation is never going to change what's on the check ride, but you can change what you want to practice and review and improve on after you get your license, and that's what we're doing today. Good rock. Bell on Steve. Yes, sir. All right. So it's just a quick taxi. Obviously, we can't share everything from all four flights, but I've distilled it down to the nuggets. All right, so this will be an instrument takeoff, okay. rotate uh, right up into the goo, transition right to instruments, simulated only. I'm watching for traffic for you. And then uh, all those busy items that we talked about, do them in the correct order, but don't get distracted. You're still obligated to fly the correct speed, runway heading, and keep the nose of that airplane going up away from the earth. Can you reach in your pocket and find a pen for me? Uh, no, the answer is no. Your, your job is flying the airplane. I really appreciate how good Dan is at catching his students off guard. He never misses an opportunity to throw you off. I dropped a pen on the floor. Can you grab it for me? Nope. I'd like a piece of chewing gum. Can you get it for me? Uh, Steve, can you get him some chewing gum? Yeah. Good job. Good job. That's coming up. Here's coming up. I dropped my pin underneath you. Can you get it for me? Yeah. Sam, you can pull your foggles off. You know, uh, you said you dropped your pin. Immediately I said yes, but then I thought, oh, well, maybe that was a trap. It was a trap. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know what the answer to that is? Uh, hold on a minute. Yeah. 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 No, I'm not getting your pen for you. Did you see what your, where your head and your eyes went? You put your head down and your eyes went to the pen first and then your hand went to the pen. So your whole entire yeah, being was down here on the floor for a second. Right. Over the then it had to come back up and get oriented to your cockpit. Constantly testing the old adage, aviate, navigate, communicate is key. I was proof on this go around that managing passengers can be a challenge. Everything's good, and right about now, a truck pulls out in front of you. Right on the runway, we gotta go around. Hey Gary, you on frequency? There's a guy asking for radio checks. I don't know if you guys are hearing him. I didn't coordinate it, but it worked perfect. Somebody called you on the radio, and they called you by name. Said, Gary, during your go around, and you didn't answer, you just flew your airplane. Perfect. The only problem we had was a knucklehead in the back seat trying to let us know that somebody was calling Gary. And after a classic grider loss of thrust on takeoff simulation, the first thing we did was debrief my mistake. I'm going to give you your engine back. Excellent. Yeah, that was good. I got light. <laughs> yep. Now, just to uh, debrief while it's still fresh in our minds, during the act of go around, somebody said your name on the radio. Did you hear that? Yeah. They said, Gary, is that you? Yeah. Did you pay him to do that? No, but it was perfect. <laughs> yeah, I, I bit off on it, and as soon as I bugged you guys, I realized, like, you guys are being sterile, and I'm the idiot that bit I, off on it. Right. Steve should not have intervened there. You did the perfect thing. You didn't answer him, and you flew the airplane. You're in the act of go-around. 
He can wait a minute. He's going to be on there. They're perfect. Dan could definitely be described as old school. I mean, he flies a DC-3, but he still embraces technology. Let's simulate inadvertent IMC. We got into some low vis, and we got terrain in the area. So now we're looking out the windshield, trying to stay VFR, but we're also using our tools. We got four flights to keep us in tune with what's around us up here. Hold on to your altitude right here, just like it is, and let's see what this terrain pops up as uh, when it starts to turn to red. And there's your obstacle showing right there. It's, it's, it's trying to give us a clue that we're not doing good here. Right. And now you see the red starting to pop in. Yep. We're still about two miles from from the train ahead, and I'm looking at it visually. Let's pull the nose up a little bit, just nice and easy, add some power. And as soon as we go nose up, that red is going to disappear. And now we got a good pitch. We're uh, four to five degrees nose up. So really, there's no reason to fly into mountains anymore. We've got this. We've got this. We got this. Is just a thousand dollar iPad that you can get in mount and help keep you totally comfortable on uh, terrain. Back on board with Abe. His instrument departure started out okay. There's a good climb speed, a minimum climb speed. Fly a constant heading. Right after Dan gave that heading nudge, I noticed the runway going by of the side window. So you rotated right up into the clouds. Which meant he was not maintaining runway heading, which was one niner. And his speed was also pretty high, thus his rate of climb was not as good as it could be. Hand flying on instruments alone is tough. It requires constant practice. Fly your head in, keep that nose coming up. You want to get away from the earth. The distraction aspect of losing control of the airplane because you got distracted low to the ground causes airplanes to rotate up into the goo and come right back down and, and strike the earth. That's what happens every time. I'm going to give you an abnormal in flight. Okay. You've got an engine problem. You've lost thrust, and that's all the thrust that we got available. You can always take more throttle away whenever you want to, but you can't add anymore. This is all the thrust we got left. Lebanon so traffic, Sally, two four tingles over the top, crossing west to east at 1700. Lebanon. Now you've made it to the vicinity of the airport at 1,000 feet. What's the best thing to do from here? I think just a left spiraling descent into 1-9. Okay, all right. I like what Dan has done here, putting a scenario-based spin on the traditional forced approach. And if this isn't a time to slip, Yep. I don't know what is. We're a little bit high and a little bit fast. Uh -huh. Let's do one more okay. go around from here. I'm going to put you back in the same position that we were a second ago. This one should work out a little bit better. You can close your own throttle a little bit earlier whenever you want to for energy management. Lebanon traffic, 2 4 tango, final, 1 9 pull stop. You've got the field made. This one looks a lot better. You're coming through 500 feet, slightly fast, but you're on glide slope and uh, you've already got the power back. You're gonna touch down in the touchdown zone on speed. Final gear check is good. Keep the nose down. And even without power, we ended up over the top of the field and did proper planning so that we touched down safely. Too little energy is one thing, too much energy is another. So that was a good lesson that we did on uh, energy management on the first one and we got it corrected. I saved this one for the grand finale of our AQP grassroots introduction episode. We're going to do a simulation here. Let's review what we talked about in our briefing. If we have an emergency, we, we declare an emergency, and I'm going to have you actually do that. Even though we don't have one going on, I want you to just to trust me. I got it worked out with these guys, and it's all going to be good, okay? Okay. You're going to actually say those words on the radio. But I want Simulated or real? Real. Yeah, you're going to say, sir, we have an emergency. We are declaring an emergency. You use those words, 5-7 Delta is declaring an emergency, and at that point, you have the whole airport. Turn the airplane towards the field, and you land any runway, any way you want, and put it on the ground. And Abe, you've got an idiot passenger in the back seat with a camera that you're going to need to brief on your way in about what you want him to do. Don't forget about that. Okay, uh, after you declare an emergency. And part of it's going to be, we're on fire, we've got to get the hell out of here as fast as possible. So we're really going to do all that. Right. Okay. Let's see how Abe handles having an idiot passenger like me in the back, and if he even remembers me. That's Martin Tower, Cessna 6457 Delta is declaring emergency. We're going to take 3-2. Cessna 557 Delta, roger. Uh, wind 103, runway 32, clear to land. Tell me you want all men and equipment. Uh, Smart Tower, we want, we're on fire, we want to have all men and equipment. 
Roger, I understand. Fire on board. Men are equipped be enough. Five safe souls and fuel on board. Okay. Have three souls on board. Says five seven Delta, Roger. Okay, so you got the fire, you've declared an emergency, and you've asked for all men and equipment. This airport is yours. You can land in the grass or taxiway or ramp. You can do whatever you want to do. The objective is to get the airplane on the ground safely and get out. Don't forget to brief your passengers. Roger, right on Alpha Juliet to the ramp. Marty ground point four, good day. I don't know, but Julia to the You can use slap if you want it. 63 Golf, extend downwind, I'll call your base. Extending downwind, you'll call base, 736 Golf. Test 855, try to disable, hold short runway 19. Just stop right on the center line and chop your mixture. You're on fire. You're going to hold your position there. Open the door, open the door, mags off, everything. Door dead, dead, door. Clear to land. Clear to land, 85 Foxtrot. Test 1, Sarah Zulu, number 2. Let's get out of the airplane. Number 2, 31, Sarah Zulu, clear to land. This is a pretty awesome experience. We just teed up the uh, fire and rescue guys to really practice this and actually did the third emergency. Dan teed it up. I definitely had the adrenaline going on. We were really going to do this. Yeah. But there's been lots of crashes where no one ever said that, and then the airplane would crash and burning before you ever get your alarm. The magic words are men and equipment or fire department or Roll everything. They just say fire equipment. You know, they, Roll the they equipment. know what to do. Yeah. Yeah. And in this case, they actually were using it as a training exercise. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Notice how fast they were there. They were there. The actual guy that uh, the guys that brought that truck out there did not know that this was about to happen. Only his boss knew that it was about to happen. And neither did I. And neither did you. Yeah. As I tried to warn Abe to remember to brief me, and he didn't. Uh, as the passenger in the back seat, but I guess you know that's that's the real situation is you got to brief the plan and then execute the plan that you briefed. And the fastest way that you can do that is to say to your back seater, "Hey, after we touch down, you're responsible. Undo your seatbelt and get away from this airplane." Mm -hmm. And that's what he was prompting you to do. That it went right over the top of your head. He asked you twice, "How about your back seat briefing?" Mm -hmm. And uh, one of them was on very short final, but you never heard it, which is normal. Yeah. A perfect example even though there was no real emergency just because you declared an emergency he asked you twice about briefing or what what about me what, what am I supposed to do and you were con so concentrated on flying the airplane not only did you not tell him what to do you never even heard his conversation right <laughs> new words for Abe that he had not heard asked we declared an emergency but I had to prompt him to ask for men and equipment yeah. and that's what we talked about in the briefing yeah, we wouldn't have known that we shot about 10 hours of footage and flew in four airplanes. We cannot possibly put all this information on YouTube. I got a 50-page PDF here. It's available for free. Just download the PDF. This should be a conversation starter. This is the basis of everything that we did. We're going to take this road show to someplace else in America in the very near future. Looking for four pilots and four airplanes. We're going to come and bring banjos, fly with you, have a great time with you if you want to uh, participate in that. Oh, you got a nice landing anyway. You got four out of four. On speed, in the touchdown zone, on center line, that's the big three. Steve, I don't know how you transition between airplanes so often. Yeah, well, it's interesting. Sometimes it's a good day, sometimes it's a bad yeah. day when I do yeah. something different. Have you ever been through an AQP briefing prior to an AQP flight review? Not that I'm aware of. I have not. <laughs> no. No. Yes, you have. Yeah. Just did it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Looking forward to flying with you, and until until then, keep your flight chop. <laughs> <laughs> I might actually use this thing funny. Uh, hook up with us, and we'll uh, we'll get going on this. Look forward to flying with you, and until then, keep your flight chop. <sighs> you don't have to do it all in one tape, man. It's okay. Until then, keep your flight chop sharp.